welcome back to the channel today i'm going to show you something that's a little bit different in most cases when you're working with apis there's something that's called a callback function wordpress has not had a very very clear way or we've not thought about it in the traditional way of how to use things like webhooks so you've had different plugins to come in but i've come to a place where i've realized you know what you can actually just use the rest api to handle your callbacks and do a number of things just inside wordpress itself so that's the beauty of it so here what we are looking at is uh, i'm looking at the rest api on my particular domain so i have my domain and i've gone to the slash wp dash json and that's where all our namespaces that's where all our endpoints are registered if you want to know more about uh, the rest api get more descriptions about it see how to do different things with it you can see the videos that have linked in the descriptions below you can see here that we have a namespace and we have a number of namespaces this wc version 1 2 and 3 what you see is from woocommerce and then we have the wp version 2 which of course is from wordpress itself so just like woocommerce we are able to create our own namespaces and do a number of things. Remember the REST API can get information as a method and can post information as a method as well. So what we're going to do with our REST API this time is we're going to post content from another website into our own website and we shall store that into custom post types and see how we can use that information for other things. For example, the callback we've talked about, we can use the callback, like in this instance, we are going to record payments that have been done, were they successful, were they done nicely, so we're going to get that information from somewhere else, and then just post them and save them in our custom post type, and we can use them to do anything else um, in that regard. So let's jump into the code. I'm going to go inside my site on the manager, I'm going to create a new folder, in our plugin section and we shall call this a uh, checky press callback url functions and of course after creating the folder we're going to create a new file inside it so create the folder first go inside the function and then we're going to create a new file that we shall give the same name and just add a php extension to it so once we are done with that we're going to start editing it to add our code so the first thing we'll do is of course open up our php our tags at the uh, in the file and we're going to use an action hook and this is for the rest api so the action that the action hook that we're going to use is called a rest api in it. So when the REST API is initialized basically what we need to do is use get this function or method in inside to work. So we shall call it a techie press add callback URL endpoint. So that's what we're going to use as our function. So I will copy this and then come to function, add the method and then we are going to start adding what we need there. So inside the action hook that we've used, we have a method registered in there and it's called a register rest root. I don't know how you say that word, whether you say route or root, that's entirely up to you. So inside this method, it expects three expectations. It expects three parameters. The first parameter is what we are going to have as the namespace so we'll have techie press as our namespace and we shall have this as version one because later in the lifespan of our software we might decide that we actually want to have a version two so in order to advance our software we don't have to remove version one we can still leave it and then advance to version two so you're planning in the future the next thing that it requires is going to be um it's going to require the endpoint. So the endpoint, we shall call it receive callback. So this will be our endpoint. Let me just comment this so that you can be able to follow through. So that's the endpoint. 
and this is the namespace. Now the next argument that it requires, of course I don't need to forget the comma here, the next argument that it requires is an array of arguments. So inside this array is where we're going to register the myth method of the endpoint. For example, here the method is going to be, we use methods which is uh, required, the method will be post. Of course you have the option of having get, put, delete and so on, but in our case we're going to be receiving information from another API and we want to save it or use it in our own system. So we use the post. So we'll have our methods there. The next thing that we're going to record is a callback. So we need to also have a callback that will be used by our endpoint. So the callback, we shall give it a name and we are going, I'm just going to use part of this, I'll call this take a press, receive callback. So this is what we'll use to add our new functionality. So I'll add a function with this name and I will pass in uh, some data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to return data. Now before I return that data I need to define it and I'll say my data is going to equal to an array so I'll wrap this as an empty array. I wrap it as an array so that I can always chain on different things all together. So the first thing that I'm going to chain on is a message to it. So I would say message, the message is going to equal to, go to the semicolon, you have reached the server. And that will be our message to it. And we can also add another thing altogether and I'll choose to say let this be the status and we shall say the status is going to be okay. So with this in place we're able to save this. Now let's go on our endpoint and see whether this is actually active. So I'm going to go for http lp json. So we'll just go to our wp json. And when we come to the namespaces, we're going to see that we have our, end, uh, our namespace, take you press version one. And if we go inside the roots or routes, depending where you, what you say, we have our receive callback as a root here. And we can go and see that the methods we have is a post. And we have only one endpoint that receives posts. So we can see the links of that endpoint as this. So when I click this, you'll see that it says this does not exist. And this is how WordPress reacts. It's supposed to protect you, you're supposed to be posting information, you've not posted anything so it automatically protects you. So we're going to go back to our code and we're going to write some, we're going to write some code to help us fix our issue. So I'm going to pass in an object which I'm going to call request data, it can be any name here, and this is basically using uh, the class of uh, the REST API class. So the class that we are looking at is actually the WP REST class here that has a number of methods that are chained to it. Uh, for example, you can get a method, you can set the method, you can set parameters, you can get the parameters, and those are some of the methods we're going to use to capture our details. So back in our code, We've passed in this object. This object is of this class, the WP REST uh, request, and we're going to say the REST that object is going to equal to parameters. Now these parameters is going to get params as the method that we're going to chain onto this. So sorry, I've replaced this. This is supposed to be here. So we're going to say our parameters that we're getting from our method is we're going to get the params that are passed on from the request data object. So what kind of parameters can we get? So let's say, let's say for example we're expecting the parameters of 
let's say you're going to post your name, so we'll expect the name to be passed in, so we're going to parameter as name, so we're going to have a variable of name that we'll expect to get from the parameters, a parameter which is passed in as name. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to add another object inside our data and I'm going to say, I'm going to call this a received data. So received data is going to have an array and inside this array we're going to pass in the name. So we have the name passed inside here and the name that we shall have passed in is going to be equal to name, for example, here. So we can get a number of other things, let's say even password. So we'll get password here, copy this, and we're going to just duplicate this and pass in password, and then we'll pass this in also as password. So when we save, when we make a posting to this API, to this endpoint, we're going to get those parameters stored up inside small variables like this, and then we're going to pass in a data status of OK, we're going to receive this information, and we are going to pass in also this message. So let me save this, and then I'll open up my postman to help me to post that information. So can make some conditionals to return a particular message. For example, if I want to make sure that someone has passed in the name and the password, I can do an if statement here, I can do an if statement and say if the name and password are true, so if name is true, so in WordPress we write in uh, the reverse, if this is true and true, the password is also true, so we'll copy this. If both of them are true or if they are not empty or if is set, that is another way you can say it, if is set and if the password is also set, close this properly, if both of them are set then we are ready to say everything is okay, status is okay, the message is okay, we'll cut this and paste it here. So let me just tap this to make it uh, better readable. Otherwise, if everything is not okay, we can pass in a message and we're going to pass it onto our data and we'll just say the data status is failed. So it's failed and we shall pass in a message and say parameters, sorry, this is the message still, and we'll say parameters missing. Parameters missing. So I'm going to save this, I'll just remove this extra space and save this. So inside our function we've passed in a name, we've passed in a password, that's what we're expecting, and then when both of them are set we shall have a proper welcome message, and if they are not passed then we'll have an error. So we'll save this, and I have a typo here, thank my editor for letting me know, so we'll save this. So when I reload we still have this issue here, but if I come to my postman and use this same callback here as you see in the browser, I'm going to go to the body and I'm going to pass in a couple of things. So I'm going to pass in a name and that name will be Lawrence for example, and then I'm going to pass in a password. This should be in double quotes because this is JSON, so we're going to have a password and that password will be it's me 2020 let's say. So we have our JSON right up there, so we're going to ping this on our server, so I'll send this and you're going to see we still get an error of this showing up, so let's go back and check what's happening. So if I go to our postman and make sure that the, the endpoint is right, and hit send, passing in our name and our password, you're actually going to see that we get back a status of OK, data received, we have the name and password, so meaning we can pass back the same information, and then we'll have a message from the server telling us so. But 
imagine we didn't pass in the user uh, the name and the password and then I just hit send what will we get back we get back a status of failed and we get back a message of parameters is missing so with our API we are able to receive information from another API and still give back a proper message and also just utilize the information the way we want it so in the next video we are going to actually just save the data that we get from the API into a custom post type we can also manipulate the same data to do a couple of functions so for example in the WooCommerce payment gateway we could have set the callback endpoint given it to the other server and then choose to receive information whenever information comes back from that callback it triggers a particular action inside our WooCommerce order payment so that that particular order is actually cleared for example or we can use the data in whatever we choose to please so if you want to see how we do this please subscribe to the channel uh, give the video a like if you found it impressive and let me know in the comment section whether you have a question or you want to say something just leave it in the comment section don't forget to see the other video series in the chat don't forget to see the other videos about the REST API uh, in the dis video description below. So enjoy your day!